What's up, audit fans? Dr. Amanda White here, and today we're going to look into designing audit procedures. Now, I've talked about this a lot before. I have an entire series devoted to different examples for designing tests of internal controls and substantive tests that you might see in common types of businesses. Now, as a result of those videos, I have been overwhelmed with requests really specific stuff like, can you please make a video for pension assets for African ports uh, organizations? Or can you give me an audit program for you know, this very specific industry and uh, you know, this very specific account? And while I love hearing from you and getting your requests, I'm not uh, I guess, helping you develop the right sort of skills you're going to need as an auditor by me making thousands and thousands and thousands of example videos. There is that old saying, you know, buy a man a fish or give a man a person a fish, you'll feed them for a day, teach them how to fish, they'll be self-reliant um, for the rest of their lives. So today what I'm going to do is go back to basics because I want everybody out there who thinks, can you write an example for this? Can you do a, an example for this account, for this type of business? I want you to be able to do this yourself and not rely on me and my specific examples, but be able to design this because you understand the principles around audit evidence and audit procedure design. Let's get into it. everybody and welcome to the channel. This is Amanda Loves to Audit. I am Amanda. I do love to audit and I teach audit to undergrads at a major Australian university and as of 2022 I'm also going to be teaching first year accounting to over two and a half thousand students per year. I'm slightly afraid um, of that one. I love auditing. Uh, I started out my career at a big four accounting firm before moving into academia and I love teaching students about accounting and especially about auditing. So today is about building some skills of self-reliance. It's actually a video to get you to stop watching my videos and start creating and doing yourself. And this is the process to design audit procedures. Now, this process doesn't come from any specific textbook um, or auditing standard. This comes from my years of experience in public accounting, my years of experience in teaching auditing, in reviewing textbooks, um, and trying to get students to design audit procedures in the best way possible. So this is, I guess, my own method that I've used very successfully and that students of mine who have used this method when they go out to their graduate jobs say that the senior or the manager is really impressed with their understanding of audit assertions, audit procedures, um, and their design characteristics. So a lot of this comes out of textbooks, which used to say things like vouch sales. They would have an audit program and they would say vouch sales. And I'd be like, hang on, if I'm a new auditor, what am I supposed to do? When I was a, a new auditor as a trainee, I would often get procedures that would just be one line and I'd have to ask a whole lot more questions. Who am I supposed to talk to about this? What documents? What am I doing with these documents? So my four procedures is to make you self-reliant, to make you uh, have the skills or help you get the skills to be able to design any audit procedure for any account at any type of company anywhere around the world so that you don't need me. You're out there doing it on your own. So I've talked about this in other videos within other videos, but I thought I'd do a specific video on this. And there are four really easy steps. Number one, very first step, is that we want to use the right audit terminology. Just like a doctor, um, you know, pastry chefs, engineers use specific terms, we have our own terminology. We have our terminology around systems of internal control, around our assertions, and around our audit procedures. And you'll find those audit procedures in ISA ASA 500 right there in the appendices. And they have things like inquiry, confirming, recalculating, analytical procedures, reperformance, um, inspection, and then I add um, some additional ones onto that. I add vouching and tracing. 
There's only eight. There's one more. If you can remember what it is of, of the nine procedures I normally use, add it there uh, down in the chat. So we always start with using the right procedure name. Am I vouching something? Am I talking to someone? Am I confirming something? So step one is to always use the correct audit terminology. That shows that you're a professional. Step two is that you want to use client or case specific terminology. So if you're a real life auditor out there, you talk to your client, you use their terms for documents, processes, people. If you're a student and you've been given a case for an exam, use the information in the case, the document names, the people, the departments. That proves to whoever is reading your procedure that you know how to integrate the professional knowledge, those um, audit that audit terminology, with the case or the client. It shows that you're integrating information, which is what we want to see. You're not just randomly trying to remember some procedure. So this shows greater depth of understanding. So terminology from the audit perspective, terminology from the client perspective. Number three in my list is be specific. All right. And when I say specific, what sort of things do I mean specific of? Um, it could be be really clear on the population that you're going to sample from. I'm going to vouch a sample from sales journal entries. All right. Then I've mentioned the population sales journal entries. Be really specific about the sampling method. Am I using haphazard, random, interval, monetary unit or dollar unit sampling? Am I judgmentally selecting? So specificity includes population, sampling, what documents you're going to look at. Oh, I want to look at invoices. I want to look at this reconciliation. I want to also grab this master price list. And then the last part in terms of being specific and having good levels of specificity is to have detailed steps, right? So you're going to vouch a haphazard sample of sales journals to the proof of delivery to the customer, to the original customer order. And then what are you going to do with those documents? Oh, I'm going to check that the quantity I recorded in the sale is the same quantity that I delivered to them. So lots of detailed steps, which is much more clear than vouch a sample of sales journal entries in which I'm going, what? What do you want me to look for? What things am I checking? Okay, so let's recap. Audit terminology number one. Um, number two is client or case specific terminology. Number three, be specific. And number four, make sure that you go back to your test and you review it and you say, is it fit for the purpose that I intend to use it for? If you're testing an internal control, have I described what I need to test correctly? Have I looked for some proof of the control, a signature, a match, some sort of system reconciliation, a code? If I'm testing an assertion, does this procedure really go back and match that assertion? Uh, I might say, oh, I'm going to recalculate these invoices and make sure that they um, trace forward correctly to the journal entry. Now, if I said I'm going to test occurrence by doing that procedure, I'd be wrong because I'm talking about recalculating in money, which means I'm using the accuracy assertion. And that's a really common thing. So common things that I see uh, in exam mistakes are number one, testing an internal control when you should be substantive testing or vice versa. Um, number two, saying you're going to be testing, you know, a certain assertion and then giving me a procedure for something else. Um, and the most common mistake I see is students writing down audit procedures that are rote learned from something else. Um, last semester, my students had an audit exam based on, what did we do last semester? I think it was a, oh, that's right. We did a hospitality company. So a company that owned bars, restaurants, hotels. And I had students, I, I, I asked them to audit wages expense. Um, I had students writing procedures about accounts receivable, about sales, about accounts payable, that weren't even related to the question that I'd set them. So don't make that mistake. So again, to recap, four simple rules. Number one, use the right audit terminology. 
Number two, use the right client and case-specific terminology to show your mastery and your ability to integrate this information and understand. Number three, be specific, including things like population, sampling, documents you're going to look at, steps that the auditor needs to take. Don't be afraid of writing a procedure that's three or four sentences long. And then number four, go back to your test, review it, and make sure it's fit for the purpose that's being asked of you. With these skills, you can write an audit program for any account, for any type of company, for any set of internal controls. You don't need to come back to me and ask me to write something. You can do this yourself. And your ability to write and design audit procedures comes with practice. It's like learning to ride a bike, watch a whole lot of videos on it, but until you get on the bike itself and you learn to balance and you learn how difficult it is and you've got to manage balancing and pedaling and steering all at the same time, you won't get the hang of it. And that's exactly the same with audit procedures. So thank you to all those people that have requested very specific accounts um, over you know, the last couple of years. But I want you to be self-reliant. I want you to push away from needing me to provide that guidance. And this will put you in good stead for the rest of your audit career. So I hope you found that video useful. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Are there any other tips that you would have for our fantastic audit learning community about how to design internal control tests and uh, substantive audit procedures? Um, I'd love for you to share those with the rest of of my viewers. We're all learning about auditing together. Of course, I have to ask you, uh, if you haven't already, press the subscribe button. Really appreciate a thumbs up. And of course, I want everybody to stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you next time.